G'day YouTube and welcome back to ASX Portfolio. So today we're going on to part two of um, value at risk and conditional value at risk in Python and we're going to be working on uh, two parametric methods. We're going to create the normal distribution which is pretty standard and then we're going to use a formulation of var and cvar for the t distribution, the student t distribution which is pretty unique and not a lot's been done. We are going to be using um, the math that's already been done for us at Quant at Risk, which, he, yeah, great site to go check out. Um, he's written a couple of books, but uh, really good resource, online resource. So without further ado, let's jump into the code. So let's start off by defining the var parametric. Now, the things that we want to uh, include in here is the portfolio returns. Portfolio return, we want the portfolio standard deviation. We want the distribution that we're going to specify and we'll make that be normal if it's not passed. Um, we want to clarify what the alpha is. Um, so the fifth percentile and or whatever percentile you want to look at and the degrees of freedom in the case of the student distribution and we're gonna make that six for the time being so what do we want to do we would like to um, calculate the um, portfolio var given a distribution. With known parameters. Excellent. And I guess what I mean by that is that we know the parameters of this model. We're going to assume a distribution and we're going to calculate um, what, the, what the mean is and what the standard deviation is. And, and therefore, that's why it's a parametric model. We're defining uh, variables um, that's going to describe this distribution. And from that, we're gonna get our value at risk. So let's say if distribution is equal to normal. So we actually need to go up here um, to our imports and we're going to import norm and t from scipy stats. So from scipy.stats module, we're going to import normal distribution and the t distribution. So that's gonna be very useful down here. So we're gonna make var equal to norm.ppf, which is the percentile point function. And what we're looking for is um, the point that is, we're looking for the point um, of which 95% of the data that we're calculating, or the returns, 95% of the returns are to the left-hand side. Now, obviously, uh, when we defined var before, we were talking about 95% of returns being on the right-hand side of the distribution, and we're only interested in the loss. But because for the normal distribution, the distribution's symmetric, we're gonna be looking at the right-hand side just because it returns a positive value, <laughs> which is easy. So we're going to multiply that by the portfolio standard distribution, standard deviation, sorry, and then we're gonna subtract the portfolio return. Now, the actual portfolio returns and standard deviations we're gonna pass are P return and P standard deviation. And remember that they've actually been accounted for um, with a square root of time rule and just multiplying the daily returns by time um, within the portfolio performance function and the previous tutorial. So that's already taken care of us. So we don't need to do anything special here with regards to time. So moving on to the next thing. Um, what if we have the distribution 
equal to t distribution. T dis distribution. Okay, so I'm going to put the formula um, for var t distribution and um, c var t distribution um, up above. Um, you'll see there that they're with respect to um, the degrees of uh, freedom, so that funny looking v, nu. Um, they're with respect to alpha, so that confidence level that we've spoken about before, and obviously h, which is um, the time periods that we're, we're looking forward, our look forward period. Um, so I'm just gonna keep that there and, and just try and um, yeah, use the formula to guide how we're going to define these functions in Python. So I'm gonna represent nu, uh, with the degrees of freedom as nu, so that funny v. So my var here is going to be equal to, I'm gonna make use of the numpy library square root. So it's going to be nu minus two divided by nu, multiplied by the t distribution now, point percentile function, and we're going to be using one minus alpha, so again, <laughs> the right hand side for a positive value, divided by 100, so we can get the five um, as a 0 0.05 for this function. And this is going to be a centered around um, nu. So then we need to just multiply by the portfolio standard deviation and then subtract portfolio returns. So that's all looking pretty good, I think now. Um, we might just put a catch all there, so else um, we're going to raise a type error. So let's just take our type error from up here. Else raise a type error and expected, um, we expected the distribution, distribution to be normal or distribution. So just telling the user exactly what, what should be expected to, to get a result here. And we're gonna return var. Excellent, that's looking good. And I think um, while we've got momentum, let's just jump straight into cvar. So we'll, we'll just copy and paste that just to make it easier on ourselves. cvar parametric, calculate the portfolio cvar given a distribution with known parameters. Um, all the same inputs. Um, that should be fine. So now, if the distribution is normal, and if the distribution is the t-distribution. So I might put the formula again for um, CVAR parametric, just because it's a little bit more complicated to understand. Um, but essentially, we're gonna be taking the inverse alpha, so one over one over alpha, and I'm gonna do that in Python by just going to the power of minus one. So we're gonna times that by norm.pdf, norm.percentile function, alpha divided by 100. And then we're just going to, again, you guessed it, multiply by the portfolio standard deviation um, minus the portfolio returns over that time period. So what happens if it's a T distribution? Well, we're gonna use the formula up on the right hand screen and we're gonna make nu um, equal to that degrees of freedom. We're gonna define a funny variable x, um, x a nu x underscore a nu, and um, essentially that's gonna be equal to t distribution um, point percentile function of alpha divided by 100 um, surrounded by nu. So with nu there as, as our mean, our, our location. So uh, CVAR, we're going to go minus one divided by alpha, 
divided by 100. I'm going to multiply that by 1 minus nu to the power of negative 1 um, multiplied by all in brackets nu minus 2 plus that funny variable there to the power of 2. So double asterisk 2 um, and we're going to multiply that again by t dot pdf so probability density function again um, with value point well the point value x a and u surrounded by nu and we're going to multiply portfolio standard deviation and portfolio return. Excellent, and that should return our CVAR for both of those distributions. So let's, uh, let's write out some functions so we can print those results. So let's define norm var equal to that function there and remember we want p return and p standard deviation so I'll just copy those in there so we also want norm CVAR which is just going to be CVAR parametric and we can copy those again and say TVAR and TCVAR, TCVAR. and all we need to do is make those distributions, the T distribution that we've defined. Excellent. And let's print those results. So we'll print them in the same format as what we're doing up here. So we'll copy and paste them. That way it can all look the same. So we'll call normal var normal CVAR and that's going to be initial investment times norm VAR times norm CVAR and then again just the same thing for our TVAR TDIST VAR and TDIST CVAR awesome so let's just check that they're all okay. Looks good. And let's make sure that runs Python var. Just waiting for that to return. Excellent. Um, let's just make sure they line up formatting. How far over is that? Perfect. Just will make it easier to, to see those values against each other. But already you can see you can see that the var is estimated below the normal and the t the t distribution var. Um, and of course the historical var um, is showing us a much more representative expected loss given we breach that level of certainty. So in the five percentile of worst days, um, you can see that the historical distribution gives us a much worse case compared to the conditional value at risk of the normal distribution. But perhaps the T distribution here, which has a fatter tail um, in its parametric distribution, can can you know more accurately represent this conditional value at risk number whereas this gives us kind of an optimistic view of what we're going to lose in in those um, five out of a hundred days where it doesn't go our way if you enjoyed watching today uh, please stick around and hit the subscribe button because next time we're going to be comparing the monte carlo method um, with a stochastic differential equation for describing the asset movement and then comparing that 
model to the normal the t distribution and the historical method that we've already used so please stay tuned and look forward to seeing you in the next one